Hi everyone. Uh, sorry it's been so long since I uh, put a video up. My dad ended up having some uh, serious health problems, so they've been taking up most of my time the last month or so, but everything's good with him now, so we can get back to doing some uh, tarantula videos. Also, I only have uh, five tarantulas. They're still small, so there's only so much you can, you can do with them. So this video, um, I'm just going to update you on them. Today's the three-month anniversary of me having them, so I've had them for three months. Uh, each of them has molted at least twice. A couple have molted three times, so they're doing well in the enclosures I have them. Uh, they're eating regularly and they're molting well. In fact, I can show you the molting board. <clears throat> that we had made up. I think I showed you this before. But you can see here the Acanthoscuria broccolihersi, the Bigfoot. He's molted twice and is probably getting ready to molt again. He's pretty big, getting close to two inches. Uh, Brachiopama bolmi has molted twice. He might be getting uh, close to molting again. Seripagobus shote has molted twice. He's probably getting close to a third. The uh, Heteroscrotia maculata has molted three times. He's doing uh, really well. And then finally, the Lassadora parahabana has uh, molted uh, two times and is doing well again. He's big enough now to where he's really tunneling and excavating uh, in his enclosure. I'm going to show you all that in just a minute. <clears throat> I'll kind of show you what I've done. I've got them all in the enclosures. Uh, from uh, jamiestrantulas.com. I'm using all her enclosures now for them the size they are now, uh, ranging probably anywhere from half to three quarters of an inch for the smallest one to uh, probably about two inches for the biggest one. So I'm using her enclosures, but I'll show you that in a minute. One of the things I wanted to talk about today was uh, temperature for tarantulas. So I've had mine now for three months and I've been able to observe what they do with various temperatures. Typically what I've done is I'll turn the light on during the day and raise the temperature to about 80 degrees to, to simulate daytime and daytime temperatures. Then in the evening I turn the temperature down to 68 to 70 and I turn the light off. Well I find that they're most active as probably most of you know with the light off at night and with the temperature low. And I've experimented with um, the light on and the temperature low and they're also active and I've experimented with the light off and the temperatures high and they're less active so you'll see a lot written about the temperatures that tarantulas need to be kept at but keep this in mind um, even in their natural environment it, whether it's a, a Brachiopalma bomi who lives in the desert where temperatures can be 90 to 100 degrees in the summer or whether it's tropical species that are living in the uh, tropical rainforest, keep this in mind about them. While they may come in climates that are come from climates that are very hot, like the desert or tropical rainforests, all tarantulas do the same thing when it's hot out, when there's intense heat. They hide from it. A desert species, they'll burrow down into the ground sometimes as deep as two feet or more, where the temperature difference can be 15 to 20 degrees. Uh, in the tropical species, they'll go into uh, nooks and crannies and trees, get under leaves and litter on the ground or in, into bark. They try to escape the intense heat where they can drop the temperature down in some of those places, especially crevices and trees. The temperature can drop anywhere from 8 to 15 degrees from the outside air. So that gives us a little idea of what tarantulas, tarantulas like for, for temperature. They don't actually enjoy the intense heat, the 80, 85, 90 degrees, they try to hide from that. And so I've experienced the same thing. When I have it up in the 80s, they burrow down. They stay down in their burrows, they're underground, they're trying to escape that heat. You lower the heat to around the 68 to 70 degree range and they're comfortable to come out and they'll be out a little bit more. So um, you'll, you'll read a lot about it and how you have to keep the temperatures good, but just use your own logic. They hide in the intense heat, and in their natural environment, when the t heat drops, which happens to be at nighttime, that's when they come out and they're more active. So if you want your tarantulas to be out more, to be a little more active, to be where you can see them, keep the temperature at a lower, lower range. They actually prefer the lower temperature, and you can tell that because they're more active, 
they're more likely to be out in the lower temperature. So 68, 70 degrees is plenty warm even for tropical species, even for desert species. Uh, they're more likely to be out and about uh, and, and manipulating their environment and interacting with it more at those temperatures. You keep the temperatures at 80, 85 degrees or so, they're going to spend almost all of their time in shelter because it's just too hot. So that's uh, my experiences. Again, I'm, I'm not an expert, but it's what I've observed. Uh, it's what we observe in nature with tarantulas, so it just makes sense. They hide from the heat. They come out and will explore and manipulate their terrain when the temperatures are more comfortable, when they're cooler. So now let me take you over to uh, the enclosure and just show you. Um, it's daytime now, so the temperature is around 80. Um, and like I said, I simulate the day and night. I, I don't know if I'll keep doing that because, again, I find they seem to be more comfortable and more active in the 70 degree range whether the light's on or off. So I may stop raising the temperature, but I've, I've still been doing that now because there's slings still. Uh, probably more important than uh, the temperature is the humidity. That's the key for tarantulas is the humidity level. So desert species need less, tropical species need more. Temperature probably 68 to 70. They're all going to be pretty happy and they're going to be active. Uh, keep the humidity right and you're going you're gonna to make them happy. That's going to be more important. But let me over, take you over to the enclosure and I'll, I'll try to get you the best shots I can. Uh, the Serapocopus shote lurch. He's made quite a little cocoon and funnel for himself and a labyrinth of tunnels underneath his enclosure. So you can't really see him well, but he's up around two inches. I'll try to see if I can get you a shot of him. Uh, we should be able to see Bigfoot, which is my Acanthoscuria broccolihursti. Uh, might be able to get you a shot of uh, the HMAC. He's maybe three quarters of an inch, not quite uh, that size. Maybe a little bit of the Brachiopalma bomi, um, and hopefully the Lassadora parahabana will be able to get you a look at. But let's take a look. So here are the enclosures. Over there we have the HMAC, and I'll see, I think I can get you a little bit of a shot of him. That's him right there. So not bad, he's gotten to, like I said, he's maybe a little over half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch, but that's him uh, right there. I don't know how good the light is, maybe that's a better angle, I guess that's the best you can do right there. But that's him. Now down in here, in this next one, the big container, that's my uh, Canthoscuria broccolihursti. Now, as you can see, he's done all this tunneling himself, right there. That's all him. Now, this, these leaves here, these fake synthetic leaves, they're all one piece. And I had them originally up here. I had planted them up on the top. Well, one night I came down, he had drugged them off the top, brought them down in here into his enclosure, and uh, buried part of them and kind of uses them now for part of his hide. But you can see his uh, big rear end right there. I think you can see that there. So it's pretty pretty good size. He's uh, way back in his in his burrow. I'll try to pull this out and get you a better look at it. But that's his, his big rump. You can really see him. There he is. Let's see if we can get a face view. Not really going to be able to. There are his legs, but he's probably close to, to two inches now. In this container here is the uh, Lassadora parahabana. Uh, he's finally gotten size enough to where he can. I kind of manipulate his enclosure. So put him in the bigger one. He did all that. Dug that all out. And I don't know if you can see him down in there. Try to get some good light on it. Let's see if we can pick up where he's at. That's him right there. You can see his 
legs there and body. Not a whole lot of them, but a little bit. Right there. He's doing pretty well. In this container, this next one here, is Lurch, the Serapagopa Pichote. And as you can see, he's got those pretty significant burrows for himself that he made in there. He rarely comes out. He again will if the um, temperature's low. He'll tend to be out a little bit more. I'll see if I can get any type of view of him at all. I don't think we're going to be able to. I probably have to at some point undo his enclosure and clean it out because he's really made it kind of tough to, to see him at all if he is down in there so really can't see him but anyway that's where he'd be and then down in here is uh, the uh, <coughs> Brachypolmy smithy or uh, Brachypolmy bomi he's doing not too badly either he's starting to, to to be a little more active he's down in there I don't with the light I can't seem to get a good there he is he's down there underneath he's probably about half an inch or so maybe a little bit more anyway sorry not better footage but next time I'm cleaning the enclosures or moving them out I'll <clears throat> I'll let you get a better look. But anyways, they're doing well, so the things I'm doing seem to be working. Like I said, hum humidity is your most important.